Dave Filoni and his love for everything. All roads are leading towards the Grisk. I'm looking forward to it. Season one was a lot of fun. I thought, in my opinion, it ended kind of... uh... What can be in store for season two of Ahsoka? Thrawn and Ezra are back in our main galaxy. Ahsoka, Sabine, Bail and Skull and Shinhati, they're elsewhere in another galaxy far, 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 far away. So what is going to happen? Something is up with Thrawn. We know that we have the Mando and Grogu movie coming up, and the plot of that has been very tight-lipped. We don't know what's going on in that, but we know it's going to be a lot of fun. I'm guessing it's going to be more about their bounty hunting ways, and it will be a nice little side story, Alice Solo and Rogue One that we're going to get that won't have too much impact on what goes forward in Star Wars. I mean, I guess Rogue One had impact if the if the Rebels don't get the Death Star, but you know what I mean. So that's why I think that's going to go. But I know the Dave Filoni movie is still something that should be in the works. I'm not sure exactly when or how it'll come up. It's probably going to be the 2030 movie for all we know. Maybe even later than that. But we know it's coming at some point. But what about season two of Ahsoka? Is there going to be a big bad threat in season two of Ahsoka? A lot of people obviously are connecting the dots to Abeloth with Balin and Shin. And that I love that idea. I've done videos on that too. You can check them out on the channel. It's a great idea, but does it does it make sense for a TV show? Do you want to have a character like Abeloth just thrown on Disney Plus? Is that where, like you can, I guess, introduce the character in a way on Disney Plus, but do you want Abeloth to be the threat on a Disney Plus series? Where the budget, I'm guessing, for Ahsoka season two is gonna be lower than it was for season one. It's definitely gonna be lower than it was for the Acolyte and for and for Andor. So you want, I think a character like that you want to reserve for the movie. Which which maybe then they use on Vong Don't Play. And so who would be the bad guy for the bad guy, the villain in season two? What would what would be what is the plot? What is Thrawn's goal in this? He's a he's a he's a tactician. He knows what's going on. He's always a step or two ahead, right? So what why did he need to go back uh, other than, you know, the rock people probably wouldn't make good mates. But what why would he want to go back? And then you start thinking about you start going looking back at the Thrawn novels. You start thinking about canon versus legends, and what would you want to do? And all roads for me right now, Ahsoka season two with Dave Filoni and his love for everything. All roads are leading towards the Grisk. I'm gonna take you out. The Grisk were introduced in Thrawn novels by Timothy Zahn, part of the Disney Star Wars canon. They're a species known for their manipulation, psychological warfare, and ability to destabilize societies from the inside. A lot of people are thinking that this is the new version of the Yuuzhan Vong, like the new original Disney Yuuzhan Vong. There are similar species known for their brutal conquest of the galaxy. The Grisk operate in the unknown regions. In canon, the Grisk are more subtle than other villain factions. Unlike the Sith or Empire, they don't rely on brute force. Instead, they conquer through fear and control. They offer to manipulate other species into submission using a blend of psychological pressure and advanced warfare tactics. In Thrawn Alliances and Thrawn Treason, we see how the Chiss Ascendancy, Thrawn's people, view the Grisk as a serious threat. Given Thrawn's role in Ahsoka, it makes sense for his greatest enemy from canon, the Grisk, to come into play. Thrawn's return to the galaxy might not just mean an imperial resurgence, but also the invasion of a greater enemy that he's preparing for. There are several key reasons why the Grisk could emerge in Ahsoka Season 2. First, the Unknown Regions are still largely unexplored in live action. And they are, of course, home to the Grisk. Thrawn himself is tied to the Grisk in his recent book trilogy. In Ahsoka Season 1, we've only seen the hints of his strategy, but no indication of his true plans. If the Grisk were revealed as a primary threat, it would explain Thrawn's mysterious behavior and give his return even more weight. He's not just a villain, he's someone trying to prevent a larger galactic invasion. Finally, the Grisk represent a very different kind of enemy for Ahsoka and the New Republic to face. With their ability to manipulate and infiltrate, they could provide a slow burn threat unraveling the political stability that the New Republic is trying to maintain. In Star Wars Legends, the Yuuzhong Vong hailing from outside the galaxy and bringing destruction on a scale we hadn't seen before. They were immune to the Force and threat in both the New Republic and the Jedi Order. Now, while Disney's canon hasn't yet brought the Vong into play, the Grisk seem to be filling that same narrative role. Many fans believe that Filoni and Favreau might be using the Grisk as a way to reintroduce some of the Legends material in a new form. The idea of an outside invader threatening the entire galaxy, one that can challenge 
The Jedi makes for a compelling story. Ahsoka Season 2 is hinting at a major external threat coming from the unknown regions. This lines up with what we've seen in the books and the overall narrative of the Mandalorian era of storytelling where various factions like the New Republic, the remnants of the Empire, and even Mandalorians are scrambling to keep the galaxy in order. The Gris could be a villainous faction operating behind the scenes, setting up future conflicts not only for the Ahsoka series, but also the Mandalorian, Skeleton Crew, a all in the Mandoverse. We've also heard whispers that some characters have been cast in secret roles that point to new alien species appearing in the show. Could this be our live-action Grisk? Bringing the Grisk into the live-action realm wouldn't just be significant for Ahsoka. It could have huge implications for the broader Star Wars universe. We know Filoni and Favreau are building towards a major event that could tie together multiple series. The Grisk, as a galactic-level threat, would be an ideal adversary for this kind of crossover. And that would make Thrawn not the only enemy, but instead the harbinger of an even greater war. Ahsoka, Din, Bo, and other heroes from this era could unite to stop an invasion from the unknown regions, leading to a high-stakes confrontation that reshapes the galaxy once again. So are the Grisk on their way to Ahsoka Season 2? Let me know in the comments down below. Are you for it? Are you against it? Are you looking for the Mando and Grogu? Thanks, everybody, for watching. May the force of others be with you.